All right, Bronco Nation, who's ready for some football? Football season is back. We're three weeks away from kickoff. The players are in fall camp. We've got the videos and analysis, of course, coming out of that. We're the season is almost here, and it's time for me to release my preseason review for the Boise State football team. I'm going to be breaking these videos into three parts, so that that way, because otherwise, all together be plus 30 minutes. <laughs> so I want to try and make these more bite-sized so they can be appreciated a little bit more. Break these into three parts. The first part is going to be the newcomers. That's what we're going to be going over right now. New staff, new recruits. How does it look this year? How is it going to impact Boise State? Then I'm going to go over the second part of the video. is going to be going over the offense, defense, and special teams, looking at how what the play on the field itself is going to look like this year. We're going to review a little bit of the stats from last year and the performance from last year and make some predictions about performance going forward this year and potentially some pr predictions for players and starting certain starting positions and then the final video is going to be the one probably most people are looking forward to that's going to be the schedule preview we're going to go through that make some predictions as well predict what the season's going to look like for boise state and what might be waiting at the end of it so let's get going here excited want a lot to talk about so let's just dig right in all right so boise state 2021 season finally here a lot has changed of course um not just from last year but from the from 2019 uh brian harson is gone we had a COVID year that felt really weird reduced schedule mountain west only besides the byu game a lot of weird stuff happened there uh with just how it had impacted players performance on the field their ability to be on the field bachmeyer was out for a couple of games uh with some COVID type stuff uh and uh, so so were many other players we had some key injuries last year uh, and of course new staff so brian harson's out andy offlos is in he's brought with him a whole new package so hopefully this is returning this year will be a return to normalcy a little bit but it's not going to be normal because boise state's going to be coming in with a brand new coaching style so normal in the football game and different in the coaching style so let's get into talking about that andy offlos first season uh, former defensive coordinator at Boise State and Oregon. Of course, Oregon is where he was served his last uh, tour before he came over here. I have a video that I really discuss more in depth. Uh, Andy Avalos is higher uh, and what, how he might potentially impact the game uh, and what he brings with him. We'll go on to my channel and look that up. I'll link it in the description as well. My reaction to his hire, where I really discuss in depth his impact on the defense as a defense coordinator for Boise State and at Oregon and what he might bring to the game. But big picture, what's Andy Avalos going to bring to the game? An increased focus on defense. As a former defensive player at Boise State, as a former defensive coordinator, he is the kind of guy that can bring Boise State's defense back to one of the top defenses, not just in the group of five, but in the nation, like they were uh, when he when he was defensive coordinator here at Boise State. And that's really kind of been the thing that slipped recently. The offense has been pretty much co constant. Um, some changes here and there, but pretty much constant. And even last year, they played okay. And the special teams has been getting better the last few seasons, but the defense has consistently gone downhill since those great defensive teams of 2012 uh, and even 20. 2013 to a certain extent uh, but those great defensive teams that Boise State used to hang his hat on has consistently gone downhill uh, and really there's no real explanation for that Boise State has continued to hire great defensive players at the position they've had pretty good defensive coordinators but I think what's happened is Boise State has always become just that such offensive focus they've had former quarterbacks and former offensive coordinators at head coach for a long time now so it's great to see a defensive hire my number one pick was always Kellen Moore and it's always going to be but I think for Boise State itself, Andy Avalos is probably the best hire possible for correcting what ails Boise State, which is his defense. So I'm excited to see what he brings in there. Now, it's not going to be all defense. There's going to be some offense in there as well. Tim Plough, offensive coordinator, new hire. Um, first season at Boise State. Prior to that, offensive coordinator at UC Davis. He was there for three years. Now, let's, I want to discuss Tim Plough here for a second. So he's an air raid guy. Prior to his hire at, at OC Davis... Sorry, UC Davis. Prior to his hire, UC Davis, um, for five years before that, UC Davis averaged 24.6 points per game for the for the whole total of those five years prior. In the three years that Tim Plough was at UC Davis, UC Davis averaged 30.9 points per game. So 24.6 points per, before his hire, 30.9 afterwards. Uh, and he says, so that's that's incredible. That's almost a touchdown difference between his hire uh, before getting there and afterwards. He said, one great, great quote from him, which really shows his drive, is he doesn't even look at the scoreboard until it reads half a hundred. That has really been the issue with Boise State. Their offense, they've continued to have that talent, but Boise State, they put up great numbers in the first half. This is kind of their 
uh, trend at least. They put up great numbers in the first half, and then the second half they put on the brakes, they let the other team get back into it, and then there, it's a struggle to the finish. Now the Boise State teams of yesteryear, the great incredible, boy, incredible Boise State teams, uh, the, the 2006 season, even before that, I mean we're going all the way back to the early 2000s, those Boise State teams racked up the points. I mean especially when you're talking about the uh, early Chris Peterson years with Kellen Moore and Doug Martin and Tyus Young Ospes, all those guys, Boise State was putting up 50 points on opponents on a regular basis. I mean, it, unless Boise State was playing a Power 5 team most most games, it was, a, it was an assumed win. Boise State was going to go out there, they were going to put up a ton of points, and even if they ended up losing, they were still expected they were going to put up a ton of points. That's what Boise State was. Boise State has become a team that goes out there, performs well in the first half, and then for whatever reason just completely takes their foot off the brake. They build up a little bit of comfortable lead, or what they soon be comfortable, and then just completely let it go. They become very predictable. The offense is, itself has not provided that spark uh, or that Boise State twist that, you know, the trick plays and the uh, creative offense. It's become a very run focused with an occasional pass type of team. And Boise State has always thrived on the pass. Now, their runners have been awesome. Boise State, don't get me wrong, prior to the last year with COVID, 10 straight seasons with a uh, thousand yard plus rusher so the rushers have always been incredibly important for Boise State but really what Boise State has hung their hat on has been great quarterback play and Boise State has two incredible quarterbacks in Hank Bachmeyer and Jack Sears either of whom could be the starting quarterback and put up great numbers for Boise State but they haven't had the offensive scheme to allow them to do that Tim Plow comes in air raid guy reestablish the focus on the pass, which I think is going to free up the run game for the incredible rushers and George Halani and the newcomer which we'll get to him later but uh, Cyrus uh, Habibi, I think is how you say his last name there, but Cyrus and Halani, uh, two incredible running backs who, if they're healthy, can put up great numbers, and with a little bit of pressure taken off, with the passing game opening up, it's going to open up big lanes in the run, which is only then going to help the passing game in the end. So I think Tim Plow is exactly the kind of focus that Boise State needs. They're still going to be that multiple threat, absolutely, but Boise State's going to become that passing type team that they always were, that they always hung their hat on, being able to get out there and put up big yards in the passing game as well as in the running game. Uh, Spencer Daniels, defensive coordinator, uh, first season as the main defensive coordinator of course he's been on the team the last two years as the co-defensive coordinator but according to the Boise State website this is his first season as the main coordinator uh, he also has a co-defensive coordinator Kane Iwane who's the former defensive coordinator at Montana State so they're going to be doing it together but according to Boise State's website their roster website at least uh, Spencer Danielson is going to be that main defense coordinator for Boise State excited to see what happens excited to see what changes are brought in I think even though these two guys are going to be the defensive coordinators and Andy Avalos has a lot more things on his plate I think he's going to be highly involved in the defense. It's always been his mindset, always been his mantra. I think he's going to do great things for Boise State uh, as far as just reasserting and readdressing into that defensive focus to be that team that 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 offensive coordinators are looking at Boise State coming up on the schedule and scratching their heads trying to figure out how they're going to beat them. So, and I'll, I'll address that later when we talk about the, the offense, defense, and special teams a little bit. So let's look at the newcomers. So that's the new staff. New staff out of the way. Let's look at the new signees. All the new recruits for Boise State. It's a pretty exciting recruiting class. Uh, so the Boise State had 17 players signed in that recruiting class, and then they added some more additional transfers, walk-ons, that kind of thing. So we're going to look at the players here. So... Boise State had added three quarterbacks, uh, Taylor Green, Colton Fitzgerald, and Colt Fulton. If you remember, if you watched my postseason review um, of Boise State football, at least the offense, I, did, I never ended up making the defense and special teams review videos. But if you watched my offensive review video, you'll remember that I said one of my keys to the game for uh, new Andy, for Andy Avalos coming in was to increase depth at key positions. And one of those positions that really needed some talent in the backfield there was quarterback because injuries what over the last few seasons even without COVID I mean you go back um to 2018 so even oh sorry 2019 even without COVID you still have Boise State players uh, quarterbacks dropping like flies I mean Jalen Henderson Henderson rising up to be uh, from third string to lead Boise State on that great 4-0 run, being just an incredible player there. But Boise State has always, their first and second string have always been great, um, but third string has really been an issue, at least last season was an issue for Boise State. Uh, Caden Fendigan came in, tried to do his best, but really wasn't able to perform up at the same level as Jack Sears and Hank Bachmeyer. So 
needed to build a little bit of depth there, and I think they definitely went out and did that. So I'm excited to see these three additions here at quarterback for Boise State. Uh, wide receivers. Uh, wide receivers, Boise State went out and added four wide receivers. Uh, Eric McAllister, Caden Dudley, Jalen Richmond, and Ben Ford. I'm especially excited about Eric McAllister and Ben Ford. Eric McAllister is a big target. He's six foot three. He has speed. He has hops. He has maneuverability. I think he's going to be a player that can come in and play immediately. Boise State has a little bit of depth there at receiver, but as I'm going to discuss when I get to the offensive section, they needed a little bit more. I'm excited to see them add that. Ben Ford, another exciting player. My cousin actually played against him up in Idaho. Uh, so I'm excited to see Ben Ford out there. He's a very diverse player that he played a little bit of wide receiver, a little bit of safety, um, kind of play that can be all over the field. I think Boise State's going to mix him up a little bit. I don't think he's going to necessarily be in the main rotation there, but I think they're definitely going to get him some playing time, see what he can do, mix him around in different packages, maybe put him in at slot, maybe put him in outside, maybe line him up in a tight end type position, not not as his main position, but just kind of lineup wise, see where he can get the ball in his hands and see what he can do there. Offensive line, Boise State added court, uh, court, um, Oh, man, I'm messing up these names. I'll get used to them once they start making plays on the field. Uh, but I'll just give it a shot. Cord King Kinglin, uh, Joseph Amos, Amos, Joseph Amos, sorry there, and uh, Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph, especially exciting addition there at offensive line. Uh, a big player. I think he can come in and put in stats right away, providing support up there at front. Of course, offensive line really struggled for Boise State last year. Returns a lot of stars, which we'll discuss in part two of the video. But I think he's going to cut Mason Rudolph. Randolph is a player who can come in and put up stats right away and be may, potentially maybe not a starter, but a player who can definitely be in the rotation, providing some fresh blood there at offensive line. Tight end, Matthew uh, Lauder is the one recruit at tight end. Uh, secondary, Boise State. Now, secondary linebacker, defensive line, all of these are important positions because Boise State defense really struggled last year, and I'll discuss that more in my second video here. So it was really important for Boise State to go out there and get some uh, key talent at the defense position. I think they did that. Went out in the secondary, we got uh, Jalen Neal, Zion, Zion Washington, and Sei Aladipo, Aladipo sorry. Uh, at linebacker, we got five linebackers added in. That's important there. The Boise State added five for freshman linebackers, even though they return their two starting linebackers. So linebacker is going to be a deep position with a lot of talent. Marcus uh, Notoriani, James Wilburn Jr., uh, Andrew Simpson, Rahan Tatum, and Jaya Jones. And a defensive line, they added Ahmed uh, Hassani. Has, 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 All right. There we go. Work my way through there. Big struggle. Uh, but fresh. as far as recruits here, I think any of those players that got recruited in defense have a chance to come in here and make some plays. I think that defense overall, besides from a few positions, such as linebacker, of course, with Noah and Wimpy coming back, who did such a great job, uh, safety with Skinner and that kind of thing, but really... Uh, cornerbacks, safe cornerbacks, uh, secondary safeties, even down the line, and you're mixing up some of those second string positions. All of those positions are up for grab, and I think you could see any of these freshmen coming in uh, and potentially even earning starting positions. But definitely all of them, I think, potentially getting some playing time, depending on what happens in fall camp. Defense is just a big hodgepodge. I think that's going to be a fierce competition to see who comes out there on top. Especially Dan Diablo is putting in such an emphasis and wanting to shift things up and make some changes. I think you're going to see a lot of uh, new things happen on defense, new uh, plays put into positions, new formations, but especially new players. I think these freshmen are going to get a chance there. So just kind of overviewing as far as the new signees go here before I get to the transfers, which are big, but just over the new signees here. So the players I'm most excited about are going to be uh, Eric McAllister, Caden Dudley, Ben Ford, and Mason Randolph. Uh, Joseph Amos also looks pretty good there. And then in the second, just defense in general, I'm excited about all of these players because I think any of them could come in and make a big contribution up front. Uh, sorry, in the defense there. All right, so transfers. Now, this is where it gets really exciting. because Boise State put in a lot of transfers this year uh, with who could come in and make some big plays and big impacts early, and I think definitely get some starting positions. So offensive tackle Will Ferrara, uh, Texas Tech, can play right away. Uh, played in 10 games for Texas Tech as one of their main second-string guys, uh, both at center and offensive line. You don't really recruit a guy like that unless you expect him to come in and play right away, especially a graduate transfer like this. So I think he's going to come in. I think he's going to provide some starting experience right up front, right away. 
and I'm excited to see what he can do and improve the strength of the offensive line. Safety, Jared Reed, again, a player who can play right away from Utah State. So finally saw the light, decided to come to the Wright Mountain West team. Uh, gl glad he was able to make it there in his final season. Uh, graduate transfer, Utah State, he had 18 tackles and one sack in three games last year. So played lightly, but I think that he can come in here and add some depth at safety. I don't think he's going to supplant either uh, Jail Skinner or Tyreek Jones at safety, but I think he's definitely going to add some depth. And Boise State puts in multiple different positions, multiple different formats. They'll put in players who, even though they're a safety primarily, they'll put them in at uh, kind of a cornerback position or even kind of a deep linebacker type slot. So, I mean, they play these players all over. They don't really care what your designator means. They care what you can do on the field and what your talent is capable of uh, contributing to the team. So I think this is a player who's definitely going to come in, see, uh, see a lot of heavy playing time this year. So make sure you know his name, Jared Reed. I'm excited to see what he can bring to the table. Kurt Raftel, tight end, Nebraska, six receptions, 72 yards last season. I'm excited to see, actually, I'm sorry, I think that's his career overall, six receptions, 72 yards. Anyhow, player who can come in, I think he's going to be a big player right there. I think he's going to come in and perform well for Boise State. Boise State does, of course, return tight ends. They return Riley Smith, who performed well last year. Uh, and I, But I think this guy, he's a little bit of bigger body. I think he can come in, perform a little bit more, especially in the blocking game. But he's also, with 672 yards, he's able to get in the receiving game. And I think he'll get a chance to use that Boise State because tight ends always featured heavily into the Boise State offense. All right, Caleb Biggers, a cornerback transfer in Bowling Green, cannot play right away. So he's kind of a down the road, at least not according to 24-7 sports. I'm not sure how that works out with COVID or anything like that because um, he is listed on the Boise State roster of course and the Boise State roster doesn't designate who can play and who can't. 24-7 Sports says though he can't play right away so potentially looking down the road for this guy but when he is able to get in a game whether it's this season or next season he's going to make a huge impact. Perennial starter Bowling Green four sorry 100 tackles four uh, passes defended and he also returned uh, a kick return for a touchdown. So this is a player who is a big playability uh, big uh, a guy who can come in, impact both in the defense and in the special teams. I'm excited to see what he can do, whether that's this season or next season. Again, I'm not sure. Whatever it is, I'm excited to see what he can come in and he can do. Now, finally, the transfer that I'm the most excited about, in fact, he's the new addition to the team that I am the most excited about, is, of course, Cyrus Habib. You know what? It's because it's hyphenated last name. I'll even give it a shot in the last name here. Cyrus Habib Lilio. Let's see. I mean, I don't know. I, I know that's... Um, a lot of Polynesian players on the team. I'm sure a lot of Polynesian family members who watch my videos. So maybe give me some feedback on how I am pronouncing these names. I'm sure I'm butchering them. Once they get on the field and start making plays and start getting the names called, I promise I'll get them down pat. But uh, Cyrus is going to be a great running back. He's not going to supplant Halani. Halani is an amazing running back who's going to have a big year for Boise State. He would have had a big year last year if he hadn't been dealing with injuries. Suffered in that BYU game. Or, uh, sorry, I was right at the Utah State. So yeah, BYU game. Uh, no, Air Force. That's where he got hurt. Air Force. Anyhow, um, main point is Cyrus isn't going to come in and supplant Halani, but what Boise State really needed last year, not just as a running back to come in and replace Halani once he got hurt, but a change of pace back. And Van Buren really wasn't cutting that for Boise State. I'll talk about that a little bit more in my next video. But Van Buren really wasn't being that at running back who could come in and excel at the same level as Halani. And while as Cyrus is a running back who's really been kind of a goal line, short yardage specialist, he's a big back a bruiser, he also has speed and agility and a maneuverability and a player who can come in and make big plays. I think he's going to have a big season, uh, not just as a change of pace back, but potentially if Halani gets injured again or something like that, a player who can come in and uh, perform well as a, as, a, as a replacement for him. But I think he's going to have, he and Halani are going to be an incredible duo. I think we're going to see a return to what those famous Boise State running back duos that we have in the past, whether it was Doug Martin and Jeremy Avery or Alexander Madison and McNichols, uh, whatever it was, or uh, DJ Harper and Jerry, Jerry, Jay Ajayi, those great Boise State duos that we've always seen in the past, I think that this is going to be another one of those great duos that we look back and, and say, wow, either of those guys could have made, it, both of those guys made impacts on the game and really Boise State would have been fine with either of those guys or were fine with either of those guys on the field. So I know I'm hitting uh, 20 minutes on this one, so I apologize on that, but a lot of people to review, it's new staff, new faces on both the coaching staff, of course, and also going to be on the field. So not an easy video to get through quickly and I don't want to rush it because I really want to take time to appreciate what each of these players potentially brings to the field and really give detailed analysis on that. So awesome. 
make sure you guys watch my next video. It's going to be in the description. Part two, Boy State season, 2021 football season preview. Part two, going to be looking at the offense, defense, special teams. Going to be reviewing and seeing where what happened last year, what can be improved on, what's going to happen this year. Look at who's going to be those starters. And really just kind of giving a really good intense analysis of what Boy State's season is going to look like overall uh, from the three key units there. All right, thank you for watching my video. Make sure you watch my next one and go Big Blue.